Hi everyone, this is Janet Hill at the Rock Island County Health Department. Thank you for joining us. Today is December 22nd and it's 3.30 p.m. Today we have with us Edward Rivers of the Scott County Health Department, Nita Ludwig of the Rock Island County Health Department, and the Scott County Health Department Medical Director, Dr. Louie Katz, who will be speaking on the mRNA vaccine. But first of all, Nita, let's start with some Rock Island County numbers, please. Sure, today we are saddened to report another six Rock Island County residents have passed away due to COVID-19 in our county. And this now brings our total deaths in Rock Island County to 227. In addition, we do have 58 new cases of COVID-19 and that brings our total of cases to 10,319. Um, there are currently 50, I'm sorry, um, 62 people hospitalized in Rock Island County today. In Scott County, there have been 13,536 cases and 141 deaths. Okay, Nita, we'll go ahead and hear your um, talking points at the beginning and then hear from Ed and then we'll go to Dr. Katz. Thank you, Brooke. Both of our health departments and our partner hospital systems have heard from many members of the general public wanting to get in line for the COVID-19 vaccine when it's available. We are extremely happy to hear that many of the members of the community are planning to go ahead and get the COVID-19 vaccine when it's their turn. However, we have received very limited amounts of vaccine in the Quad Cities, and we are still just in the beginning phases of vaccinating the first priority group, which is our frontline healthcare workers. We ask the community for your patience as this vac vaccination campaign continues. Here are a few things to remember. We expect to continue receiving only limited amounts of vaccine in the upcoming weeks. Supply won't significantly increase until later in 2021. Vaccine can only be given to those in the priority group identified by the federal and state advisory groups. We don't yet know who will be in the vaccine priority group after healthcare workers. We have broad information about who is recommended to go next, but the order in which that takes place has yet to be decided. As of right now, there is no list that you need to be on as a member of the general public. You do not need to call your doctor, the local hospitals, or the health department to sign up to get the vaccine or to find out more. We promise we will let you know when it's your turn. We do need you to be patient. We cannot reserve vaccine for anyone and we cannot give you an exact date when it will be available to you. However, we are working hard to get plans in place so that when the vaccine is available and it is your turn, you can get the vaccine once it's available. We do need you to watch our local news partners, our website, and our social media pages for more information. And we promise to share more as soon as we can when it's available. Thank you. In the meantime, our mask up, social distance, and wash your hands message is more important than ever. Please do this to help us keep the spread low as we wait for vaccines to become more widely available in our community. We also ask that you remember the important decisions you have before you, as you finalize your plans for holiday celebrations. Gathering with family and friends as if there is no pandemic is dangerous, not only for you, your family, and your friends, but also for our community. Please make this the year you choose non-traditional, but creative ways to mark the holidays. If you decide you must, gather in groups, keep them small, require masks, eat only with those from your household, and wash your hands often. We are all relying on each other and our collaboration has never been more important. Our last ask of you is to continue to learn more about the COVID-19 vaccine. Ask questions and get your answers from reliable sources. 
so that you're ready to get the vaccine when it's your turn. We want to do our part to help share the information that you will need to make this important decision for yourself and your family. We have asked Dr. Louis Katz, Medical Director of Scott County Health Department to take on the topic of mRNA vaccines. We'll now turn it over to Dr. Katz. So Dr. Katz, thank you again for joining us. Uh, we did, as Ed said, wanted to take on the topic of mRNA, which is the messenger RNA vaccines that have been given emergency use authorization. Um, so we have a couple questions we'll pose to you and let you discuss those. So can you simply explain to us what is mRNA when it comes to the vaccines? Well, mRNA stands for messenger RNA. This is, uh, in the case of these vaccines, a segment of the genetic material of the virus uh, that is used to tell a vaccine recipient's immune cells, white blood cells, to make the spike protein from the virus that provokes a very strong protective immune response without the need to use a live virus, an attenuated virus, a killed virus, or a protein from the virus uh, to do that. For technical reasons, it allows very, very rapid development um, and modification of the vaccine. During a natural infection, the virus would do this, make the protein, but it would also instruct uh, the infected cells to make many other proteins that eventually assemble into more viruses and cause disease. So with the messenger RNA signal, all we get is that one protein uh, that we want to use to provoke immunity. It's contained inside a fat particle that is taken up by the vaccinee's cells in the lymph nodes where the shot is given, where it promote, promotes production of that protein. The messenger RNA is gone within about two, within less than uh, two days. And the protein that is made uh, uh, teaches immune cells to make antibodies and other parts uh, of the immune response. So we've been hearing about these mRNA vaccines as new, but is mRNA itself a new thing? Well, it's evolutionarily conserved for literally uh, hundreds of millions of years. These vaccines are the first uh, messenger RNA vaccines to be used in large numbers of vaccinees but vaccines for influenza, Zika, rabies, and CMV, cytomegalovirus, uh, have been under development and studied for a number of years in both animals and uh, uh, small human studies. So uh, they're new to the public. Uh, they're not new to the scientific and medical communities. They uh, are being produced now uh, on the back of decades of research much of it, I want to point out, funded by the National Institutes of Health and other U.S. government agencies, your tax dollars uh, at work. In a sense, uh, we're lucky that the SARS-CoV-2 virus waited until uh, 2020 to make its appearance uh, after all that research had become mature enough for the rapid vaccine development that you've all seen. Does this type of vaccine impact my DNA since we're talking about mRNA? Short answer, no. Long answer, no. Uh, there's no way for it to do so uh, since it lacks the uh, genetic sequences that are required to move molecules from uh, what's called the cytoplasm of a cell, the, the main body of the cell, into the nucleus where the DNA resides. Can't get there, can't do it. Um, and uh, uh, there appears to be, uh, based on, as I said, uh, now decades of study, uh, no impact on DNA. 
do we know the long-term effects of our mRNA? Uh, it's an interesting question, sort of. Remember that mRNA is a normal component of every cell in your body. mRNA is, uh, is what, what happens is that the, the genes of any organism or virus are uh, transcribed into messenger RNA that then directs protein synthesis. This happens constantly and in titanic amounts in essentially every cell of, in your body doing the critical constant work of protein synthesis. The amount of viral mRNA uh, in the vaccine is, um, is minuscule compared to the amount of messenger RNA already in all of these cells. There are no recognized long-term effects of these mRNA vaccine preparations in cell cultures in, uh, or in animal systems. And we now have uh, a median of over two and a half months of follow-up in almost 80,000 US patients and thousands more worldwide who have received the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines uh, with no unexpected side effects. Uh, animal reproductive and development studies have not shown any adverse effects so far. Those are scheduled to be publicly available actually over the next couple of weeks. Uh, the cells, a, vaccin a vaccinated person's cells exposure to messenger RNA for the virus uh, is um, orders of magnitude less than would be the case in natural infection with the SARS-CoV-2 virus, where messenger RNA for um, the many viral proteins required to reproduce virus are made uh, in much larger amounts than what we see using the vaccine. Uh, I'm uh, as certain as I can be with the data available that this is gonna be a safe and effective vaccine. Are all the upcoming vaccines going to be mRNA vaccines, do we know? No, uh, there are 200 vaccine candidates being developed around the world, small handful are mRNA. The others use more traditional approaches, uh, isolating proteins from the virus to be used as a vaccine, uh, um, weakened SARS-CoV-2 called attenuated virus, um, inserting genetic material from SARS-CoV-2 into harmless vector uh, vaccine viruses, and on and on and on. Many, many, many different approaches. Uh, the mRNA vaccines uh, have moved to the front because they're so easy to work with uh, in terms of the development process. Uh, the other in the U.S., the um, Operation Warp Speed has put its resources behind, I believe, about six uh, vaccine candidates. Two of those are vector viruses. That is, they use a virus called adenovirus with, um, with genetic material uh, from SARS-CoV-2 inserted in order to do much the same thing that I described for mRNA. And then there are... Uh, what are called subunit vaccines in development with warp speed money that essentially involve isolated proteins of the virus that will be useful for provoking an immune response. Um, so uh, um, lots of different options uh, that are gonna be uh, evaluated over the next several weeks and months. Okay, we do have a question that's come in. Um, so there are people that we have heard who have had allergic reactions to the vaccine. What is their body reacting to in the vaccine? Do you have an idea? I have lots of ideas. Um, uh, it's, it's almost certainly not the mRNA. mRNA is a normal constituent of cells, so you're not allergic to that. 
Um, there are a number of things uh, in the lipid particle, the fat particle that encapsulates the mRNA that could be uh, um, involved. Um, and there is a substance called polyethylene glycol uh, that is used to stabilize uh, the vaccine. Uh, that could be the issue as well. I think it's important to understand that I, I believe there are worldwide about six cases so far, um, and all have been easily treated uh, with uh, easily available um, um, medication called epinephrine. Uh, and uh, vaccination clinics for many years, in fact, uh, have kept epinephrine administration equipment uh, because this can happen with vaccines. Nothing surprising yet, um, uh, but uh, being studied uh, and, and what component of the vaccine actually causes it uh, will be worked out over a period of weeks and months. Um, we're not sure yet. I know both of the um, vaccine manufacturers have released who should not receive those vaccines. And I think it does um, connect back to individuals who've had a previous history of allergic reactions to any of the ingredients or compounds within the vaccine. Do you want to just speak to that so we can give the public a general understanding of, um, you know, maybe some of the history behind people who might have been having these reactions? Yeah, I mean, if um, when people are vaccinated, they'll be given a piece of paper that lists the components of the vaccine. And if they uh, know that they're allergic, then we're going to ask them not to be uh, vaccinated uh, at that time. Uh, but the benefits of these vaccines enormously outweigh the small risk of what uh, an easily, um, easily treated complication. So we, uh, we want uh, to make this as simple as possible and we want to allow the largest possible number of people uh, to accept vaccination. Um, this is uh, a little bump in the road, not a big bump. Uh, it's being worked on. Recommendations from CDC and the manufacturers are appropriate and permit almost everybody to get the vaccine. I don't see any additional questions. Is there anything else you would like to provide today, Dr. Katz, in regards to the two vaccines? I know Moderna just received emergency use authorization um, in the last couple of days. Anything new there that you would like the public to know? Well, I think it's important uh, to recognize uh, what we don't know and the, the critical things that we don't know right now is how long the really remarkable protection from these vaccines last. Uh, and uh, then there are subgroups of people uh, that weren't well studied um, in the big clinical trial. Uh, and uh, we don't know when they'll be able to be immunized. Um, so uh, since we also don't know whether the vaccine only prevents illness, or actually prevents transmission of the virus. Until we know much more, time frame of several months, I expect, uh, we need to be vigilant and continue to cooperate fully with all the non-pharmaceutical interventions, NPIs, that we've been recommending uh, since early spring. And that includes masking, physical and social distancing, elimination of indoor gatherings and travel that are not critical, hand hygiene, uh, environmental disinfection, and all the other standard public health infection control measures we've been recommending. That's for the foreseeable future. I think it's important to remember that you and your loved ones have to remain alive and well to get this vaccine. So now is the worst possible time to, to relax any of that vigilance. We have two additional questions. First, um, do you have a thought on whether there will be a vaccine that would be okay for people to take who've had an allergic reaction to something such as the flu vaccine in the past? This vaccine is acceptable for people allergic to the flu vaccine in the past who are not allergic to the particular 
components of this vaccine, which are not in most of the flu vaccines. This, there is no contraindication to receiving this vaccine. If you've had an allergic reaction to the flu vaccine, it does not contain the components of this vaccine, which is essentially all the flu vaccines. You need to be very clear about that. The only people who should not take this vaccine are those who have a known allergy to components of these vaccines. Another question about what they're seeing in the UK. Are there any concerns about the new strain from the UK being identified? And would that affect the current vaccine's effectiveness based on what we're hearing? Um, I, th I think it's too soon to make declarative statements about that. Uh, what we know at this point is uh, the early data suggests that the strain from the United Kingdom is transmitted somewhat more easily does not cause more severe disease and should not be expected to escape the vaccine. And the reason for that latter statement that we expect these vaccines to remain effective is kind of complicated, but the protein to which we're asking the immune system to respond in these two mRNA vaccines is a complicated protein uh, and the vaccine provokes antibodies to multiple parts of it. So we expect that it will maintain, they will maintain efficacy against it. Both companies are doing experiments that should take five to 10 days to complete that will tell us if there's a difference uh, uh, in terms of the UK strain and the strains circulating in the United States. Uh, but this is, there's nothing surprising in seeing um, a strain evolution. Uh, and I think uh, we've all been a little bit more panicky about this than we should be. Another question, can a person with clots or a history of clots in medical history, excuse me, uh, receive vaccination with the COVID-19 vaccines? Perhaps especially important that they do, since one of the ways that uh, COVID-19 kills people is uncontrolled clotting. Okay, I see no additional questions at this time. So we'll go ahead and conclude the briefing. Dr. Katz, thank you for sharing some of your time and knowledge with us today. Um, we'll be posting this on our Scott County Health Department's website, as well as our social media pages. You can find it there. We intend to have one briefing next week um, on Thursday the 29th. So we will be looking forward to talking with you all then. Uh, wishing everybody a safe and healthy holidays coming up and thank you for joining us. Have a good afternoon.